So now let's look at uh, E1. This is just a classic example of an E1 elimination where I have an alcohol and I treat it with a strong acid. And what happens to my alcohol is that it gets protonated. So I do proton transfer. Here's my acid. This is the structure of sulfuric acid. I do proton transfer. Now I'm here and I'm forming this hydronium ion intermediate. And then I lose my leaving group. That's what this arrow is depicting here, right? That's my rate determinant step. And I form a carbocation intermediate. Let's look at the transition state for the rate determinant step, uh, which is loss of water in this case, or loss of my leaving group. If you look at the transition state, I have a partially broken carbon-oxygen bond, right? Where these electrons are leaving with oxygen. And this is transition state looks like for the SN1 as well because the, the, the rate determining step is the loss of a, leave, a loss of my leaving group. And so with that being said, now this is the transition state on the way to formation of the carbocation intermediate. And then with the carbocation intermediate, I need to do proton transfer or to deprotonate here so that I can form my double bond. So um, this is uh, water coming in and acting as a base keep in mind there's no external base added but that but water is amphiprotic meaning that it can be a base or it can be an acid and so if I'm using sulfuric acid I'm making a solution of it in water and so here water can come in act as a base notice the arrows water is coming in to deprotonate and then this pair of electrons is coming here to form my pi bond and these are my products where I get uh, an alkene, I get a hydronium uh, ion when water picks up this proton, and then I get the conjugate base of sulfuric acid, which is here. All right, here's the energy diagram for E1 mechanism for the rate determining step as well as the formation of the alkene. Notice I'm going from reactant to intermediate, which is this carbocation intermediate, and then intermediate to product, which is the alkene here. And the transition state for that first step, which is rate determining, is seen here. I right, saw so a summary of the E1. It's stepwise. It's unimolecular. Uh, the rate is just K times the substrate, the concentration of the substrate. It doesn't require an, a strong base, meaning I don't have to add any base externally. Normally, something like either the solvent or the conjugate base of the acid um, can be used to deprotonate, but I don't need to add an external base like I did for the E2 mechanism. Uh, this is uh, this also works better in protic solvents. Uh, the leaving group and the alpha hydrogen don't have any specific geometry. There's no anti-periplanar for the E1, um, and it occurs readily on tertiary substrates because not only do you have a chance to generate more stable double bonds in the product, but you also form a more stable carbocation once the leaving group leaves if the substrate is tertiary. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples of E2 and E1. Here I'm treating um, this compound with potassium terbutoxide, right? I get two products, product A and product B. Notice up with these two products, my double bond is in a different place on each one. My double bond is here. And then over here, my double bond is here. So how does that happen? Let's look at the mechanism, right? And let's look at pro the formation of product A. Notice here, I have alpha protons here as well as here, right? And again, keep in mind, alpha protons just means the proton that, that, that's on the carbon adjacent to the carbon where the leaving group is. So the leaving group is here, and then the alpha proton is on this carbon because these two carbons are adjacent to one another, right? The same thing here. This is my uh, alpha proton, and then here's the carbon that contains the leaving group. So in order to form product A, the base comes in, pulls off this proton, right? These electrons come here to form my pi bond, and then I lose bromine as my leaving group. So that's product A. In order to get to product B, the base had would, would come in here, and do proton transfer. These electrons come here to form my pi bond, and then I break the carbon-bromine bond to get this alkene in the product, all right? 
and then these are my side products where I make I make terp butanol from this proton transfer I make terp butanol from this proton transfer and then uh, I get two equivalents or two moles of KBR as a result because again the potassium from potassium terp butoxide ends up in an ionic bond with bromine so looking at the two products this is a good place to introduce what we call Zaitsev's rule and what that what Zaitsev's rule says is very simple is that uh, in an elimination the, the major product is going to be the most substituted double bond the reason for that stability increases as you increase the amount of substituents on the double bond this particular double bond is will be what we call tetra substituted this double bond will be will be what we call di substituted all right because it has two carbon substituents here and then two hydrogens on this carbon this one has one two three four carbon substituents so it will be tetra substituted Zaitsev's rule says this the more stable or more substituted alkene predominates so that's going to be your major product all right let's look at an example of the e1 we have um this molecule with just warming this up in ethanol and we get one product uh here product a plus ethanol plus hcl so let's look at how that happens so again the first step in an e1 is just like the first step in an sm1 you lose your leaving group so you lose the leaving group you generate a carbocation intermediate and then ethanol comes in to deprotonate the intermediate you get proton transfer here these electrons here come in to make my pi bond which which is shown here uh, here's my product and then the chlorine here that I lost as the leaving group comes in and does proton transfer here to give me HCl and then re to reform ethanol all right so this is an, an example of an E1 keep in mind there's no external base added right the solvent in this case is acting as the base and doing proton transfer to form your double bond there's another uh, type of E1 elimination called E1CB and in this particular type of elimination uh, the conjugate base of the acid will come in and deprotonate my intermediate to give me my alkene product so here the first step proton transfer the alcohol here is going to deprotonate sulfuric acid and then this pair of electrons comes back here to give me my conjugate base now I'm here I have a hydronium ion so the leaving group leaves that's my rate determining step uh, and then from here I form my carbocation intermediate the carbocation intermediate is then deprotonated by the conjugate base of sulfuric acid which is shown here so when this proton transfer happens this pair of electrons comes here to make my pi bond and then notice in the product I get my pi bond uh, plus water plus I reform uh, sulfuric acid so let's compare SN2 SN1 E2 and E1 alright notice the bimolecular mechanisms both are favored in aprotic solvents so SN2 and E2 both uh, are favored in aprotic solvents both have a two-term rate law here the rate law is K times the concentration of the substrate the concentration of the nucleophile in E2 the rate law is K times the concentration of the substrate times the concentration of the base for SN1 and E1 notice they're both they're both favored in polar protic solvents all right the rate law is is unimolecular it's the same for both K times the concentration of the substrate uh, the preferred substrate for SN2 is primary because the less crowded the reactive site where your leaving group is um, the more reactive it is all right the SN1 prefer prefers tertiary substrates because again you form a carbocation intermediate so if a ter you have a tertiary substrate it's going to be more stable the E2 prefers also a tertiary substrate um, because again you have a chance to make a more substituted alkene if your substrate is, is uh, more substituted so and then the E1 also prefers tertiary for the same reason that SN1 prefers tertiary and that's because the uh, carbocation intermediate gets formed and the more substituted that intermediate is 
the more stable it's going to be. All right, so here here's some special considerations and again ways to look at these mechanisms uh, and 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 be able to discern between the different mechanisms. Uh, SN2 always proceeds with inversion of stereochemistry, meaning the nucleophile, uh, the incoming nucleophile, and the departing leaving group will have different orientations. For SN1, you get a, a racemic mixture of uh, products if the leaving group is at a chiral center. For E2, you need a strong base, you need your leaving group and your alpha hydrogen to be anti-periplanar. And for E1, uh, you have to remember that this is similar to the SN1 uh, all the way up until the elimination actually happens. And, and E1 can happen uh, by also the E1CB mechanism where the conjugate base comes in and, and deprotonates your carbocation intermediate. As always, if you have any questions, you can tweet, you can email, or you can drop by my office. Peace.